Today, she is the oldest commissioned warship anywhere in the world. But 260 years ago, when HMS Victory was built, she was a state-of-the-art line of battleship. Whilst modern ships of the Royal Navy are made of metal and designed to be undetectable by radar, Victory was built by hand, using wood and simple tools by a skilled team of shipwrights. Now, their modern-day descendants have been called upon to help conserve the ship that fought at the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. I think we've got to maintain, obviously be sympathetic to the boat as well, um, and not just hack away at it as such, but be really cautious of what we're actually treading on. Um, multiple years of uh, different shipwrights getting onto it, as well as it being from the initial uh, outright as well. Conserving a ship of this scale and age is no easy task and has put the skills and experience of the shipwrights working on HMS Victory to the test. During the big repair project, the shipwrights are using a mixture of traditional techniques, the same used hundreds of years ago when Victory was first built, and modern craftsmanship. They will work carefully to undertake the repairs, minimising as much as possible the impact on her structures and features. A first rate ship of the line is expected to operate for about nine years before it's taken through a great repair. That can on occasion be almost um, a rebuild and that's because the timber being used, it's inherently biodegradable as you, as you can see. Victory's not an operational asset anymore, she's a museum object so we want to preserve that really significant material and also it's incredibly difficult to find the skill set needed to undertake this work. Take away the metal scaffolding, hard hats and yellow high-vis jackets, and watching the shipwrights working on the restoration of Victory today would not look too dissimilar to what their predecessors would have experienced hundreds of years ago. The team are still using traditional tools and techniques as part of their day-to-day -day work, as well as utilising a whole new range of technologies, materials and approaches. This combination makes sure that the repair is completed to the highest quality and safety standard, while also keeping traditional skill sets alive. What, what we're doing is just doing these relief cuts so that we can get some of the tools. You can see the guys there just getting the tools in between um, just so that we can get at least an understanding of what the planking inboard is, is like and with the condition of it for us to start prizing the uh, planking away. Removing the planking from a ship of this size and scale isn't the easiest task to complete, especially when so much of it has decayed to something that looks like soil. As the frames are slowly uncovered, HMS Victory begins to reveal how previous repair projects haven't stood up to the elements. It's just water's got in between the seams. The seams have failed, water's got in between. It's just rotten. It's in better condition than above. Above was just compost, wasn't it? You know, hands taken away. This is more solid than we were expecting. So we're gonna remove this one here. Potentially this whole plank will just come off. Should do. That's the theory. That's the theory. <laughs> and then we will repeat it. Down, we'll do another section. We're developing, we're getting better at it. During the first nine months of the project, the shipwright strip planking from the port and starboard sides of Victory. This allows the ship to go through a drying out process before repairs commence. Not far from where HMS Victory sits in dry dock is the National Museum of the Royal Navy's Historic Ships Workshop. Here, one of our lead shipwrights is working on the difficult task of producing the many new planks required for Victory's repair. This is European oak, and because the plank si finished plank sizes that we need for HMS Victory are extremely large, it's very difficult to get timber of good quality that size these days. Um, so we're going to have to laminate the planks up out of thinner boards. Laminating wood and creating planks, some measuring up to 33 feet in length, isn't a quick process, especially as the team estimates it will take them up to a week to produce each plank. And with almost 1,000 planks needed for the repair, it will be many years before the work is completed. The laminating process is we'll joint the board, so they have to be jointed in length, particularly for the very long ones. And for that, we'll be scarfing, which is you sort of cut an angle across the end of the board and a corresponding angle on the next board, and the next board goes on 
and carries on in that direction. We've also got to glue them up in width and we'll be doing that using probably a tonguing technique where we cut a groove in the board and a groove in the next, a corresponding groove in the next board going on and put what's called a loose wooden tongue in between the two and that increases the surface area of the glue and makes it much tighter. When the new planks are fitted to Victory, they will sit with a slight kink, which will be smoothed out by the shipwrights using hand planes. That's a type of tool with a sharp blade which allows the shipwrights to flatten the surface of wood. The gaps between the planks are called seams. The seams need to be watertight in order to ensure longevity to the ship. Corking is the process where rolled oakum, rope fibres soaked in tar, is driven into the seams using a wooden mallet and metal tools. This process is followed by the painting up of the seam using melted pitch or modern sealants. This final stage gives protection to the oakum and keeps the water out of the seam. As work continues on the conservation project, the shipwrights will continue to play a key role in ensuring that victory can be enjoyed by many future generations to come.